Manitoba band loving the outcome with Heart Like You here in CHVN. We have Dr. Andy Bannister here. He's the Canadian director uh, of Ravi Zacharias International Ministries. And you also came out with a book just recently, The Atheist Who Didn't <clears throat> Exist. So uh, I don't know if you remember, but we actually talked about this over the phone when it first came out and all about what your book's about. But now it's been out for a while. So how's it been going? It's been an incredible journey, actually, uh, Amy. I've written books before, but more academically, this was, this was the first popular uh, book that I've done and it was also something... <laughs> well, I'm sure your other books were popular, but... <laughs> well, popular to a certain very small segment of society, yeah, yeah, but, yeah, uh, yeah. but popular in the sense that, yeah, perhaps sold enough copies to actually buy a cup of coffee. <laughs> and um, The Atheist Who Didn't Exist, and uh, people who want to find out about it can go to the website, theatheistwhodidn'texist.com. Uh, it was really an attempt to blend uh, kind of comedy and sort of popular theology and a little bit of apologetics and try and engage a lot of the kind of contemporary atheism we're seeing in the in the media, the likes of Richard Dawkins and Christopher Hitchens, and there's other voices, names we could mention. It's kind of everywhere in our culture. And I became aware that I think a lot of Christians have written responding to that kind of, uh, that kind of new form of atheism. But those books really only get read by Christians mm -hmm. and a very tiny number of Christians because the, while they're brilliant, they're often a bit dry. And I thought, well, I'm not, I'm not brilliant but I can be funny, I'm told. So <laughs> what about trying to combine those things into something readable? And particularly, how could I write a book uh, responding to some of the atheist arguments that atheists might actually read? That was yeah. my, my goal. And I thought, well, comedy is a way to do that. If I could write a book that you could give to your atheist friend, right, and say, look, you won't agree with everything, I'm sure, but you'll find it funny. That was the goal. And the last uh, sort of six months it's been out, I had some amazing stories really? of that happening. I had a friend, I mean, a few weeks after it was launched, a friend of mine, uh, messaged me on Facebook to say that she'd brought a copy home, she'd bought a copy at a bookstore, and her teenage son, uh, who's an atheist, had seen it lying on the on the countertop and gone, what's that? And she sort of sort of described what it was, picked it up. He'd read it only two pages, he was laughing out loud. And then, oh. then she said he went off with it, he went off to university that day with it. And she was, wow. he was texting her pictures of photo of pages and quotes that he liked all day long. And she said, we're now having the most, these most incredible conversations about faith that we never had before. And my wow. favourite was just before Christmas, I was a, a guy came up to me at a conference I was speaking at and said, oh, I just want to thank you for the book. And he said, I've got to tell you the story. He said, I was on holiday in France in the summer with my family. We had a big family get together. And he said, my sister is um, is an is a extreme left winger, Marxist, uh, into alternative lifestyle. Uh, in a, she's in a same sex marriage, um, utterly atheist, uh, very, very, you know, difficult uh, kind of to reach. Well, I brought your book on holiday. And the same, same similar story. She picked it up, howled with laughter on about page three, and just wouldn't give it back to him, read the whole thing. Then came to him and said, where did you get this? Can you get me some more copies? I want to give this to my friends. Wow. So his atheist sister is giving copies to her friends. He said, Andy, I have been praying for a chink in the door for 25 years with my wow. sister. This has opened one. Amen. So those are just a couple of stories. So I'm really grateful to the way that God seems to be using it. And for Christians who encounter the book, I'm hoping it will be a kind of gateway drug to apologetics. <laughs> <laughs> because we need we need as Christians to be thinking our faith through, and I think yeah. a lot of us find that scary. So I, I'm, the the book was written as a way of showing, look, we can have fun with this. You don't have to be a thinker. Uh, you know, you can engage at a, a lower level and work your way up. And I'm hearing a lot of that from students, and particularly who are really engaging with it. Wow. So I've been really excited just how how God's used it. Wow, there's going to be copies of this book at Mission Fest. Uh, Andy's going to be at the Young yeah. Adults event at Emmanuel Pentecostal tonight. Details are at missionfestmanitoba.org. He'll also be there uh, on Saturday and Sunday, right? That's right, they're all weekends, all yeah. So missionfestmanitoba.org is where you go for that. And we're going to be talking more about these. What do you do when you're wrestling with those questions in our faith? Uh, that's coming up in the next few, just after the 8.30 news. Britt Nicole and Lecrae together in that one, Ready or Not, on CHVN. I'm Amy Davey. This is The Morning Refresh, and we have Dr. Andy Bannister here with us. He is the Canadian Director and Lead Apologist for the Ravi Zacharias International Ministries. You're going to be at Mission Fest tonight, tomorrow, and Sunday. Details are at missionfestmanitoba.org. Um, so, you know, every, all Christians should know a bit about apologetics, but you actually have it in your title that you are an apologist. So your faith is not based on feelings, like you have thought about this. <laughs> So what are some of these mm. common questions people come up with? And when you run into doubts, questions in your own yeah. life still, what do you what do you do about that? Yeah, I mean let's start let's start there, Amy. I mean, what do I you know, what do I do when I run into questions and doubts? I mean, what was interesting as a young Christian, I don't think anyone ever told me what to do when you have doubts. 
and questions. And so when I began uh, my, my journey into doing this more seriously was when I began trying to share my faith with Muslims on the streets of London, England, where I lived back in the late 1990s. My Muslim friends would throw questions and objections at me I never even heard of. And it caused chaos in my head, really, and I had to work that through. <laughs> so that's where you started, you said. That's where it began. <laughs> that's where it began. Well, it's good to start off easy, you know? Yeah, that's exactly. <laughs> exactly. You start with a... I'm, I'm, but joking aside, I'm, I'm very grateful to my Muslim friends for asking me questions that forced me yeah. to think. And really what it did is it forced me to, a, to an impasse where I had to conclude, look, I either have to decide for myself that the Christianity is true... Not because I feel it, it's either true, in which case it's worth believing and investing in, even though it might be difficult, or it's just nice feelings, in which case I might as well let it go. Because there's only one reason to believe the gospel, and I'm going to be stressing this at the youth event tonight at Mission Fest, and that's if it's true. Because the, pro the problem with feelings, they're so ephemeral. You know, one day I feel Christianity makes me feel good, one day it makes me feel terrible. And actually, in many parts of the world, being a Christian is going to make you feel terrible because it's going to lead to persecution and a hard life and so forth. I mean, even here in Canada, it's not easy being a Christian. Why would you? There's easier ways to get a feelings high. <laughs> if the gospel, though, is true and if Jesus is who he's claimed to be, now he's worth following. And so I think that's a question we have to sift through in our minds. Then over the years, I've tried to take the view of, look, when a question or a doubt comes up, what you need to do is ask yourself this. Is it a question I really need an answer to? Is it a showstopper? In which case, let's work on getting an answer. Or is it something I'd like to get the answer to? And in which case, you can sort of put it on one side and take more time with it. It's important to separate those because I think sometimes, particularly for younger Christians, when you first come across issues and objections to your faith, everything gets bundled in the I've got to deal with it now box and it can be overwhelming, especially if you're a university student or perhaps in a workplace where there's real pressure against Christianity. And those really big questions, when I was younger, there was quite a lot of them. Over the years, there's become less and less and less of those as you work them through. Now, what's interesting, when I talk to uh, you know non-Christians or Christians who are wrestling with their faith, I'd really say there are sort of five or six very common questions that come up time and again. The problem of God and suffering is mm -hmm. a big one. You know, we believe in a God who's, God who's all powerful, who's all loving. We live in a world in which there's, there's suffering. Um, you know, what the heck's going on there? God and science, that comes up time and time again. And then actually the way you pitch the question, faith and reason. I mean, am I just believing this for faith? Is there any evidence that God exists? Those kind of those kind of questions are the common ones. I mean, I don't know if there's one of those you want me to kind of sort of drill down into. But. Wow. Okay, we're going to be continuing this conversation. And hey, we probably won't be able to get it all here for you in this moment. But we are recording our conversation now. And we are going to be posting that for you at chvmradio.com. So you can find more there. Also, go on over and talk with Dr. Andy yourself at Mission Fest. Go to missionfestmanitoba.org for those details. Stick around. We're going to be chatting more with him in the next few minutes. One thing you've also been doing is... You've been going into universities. You've been going into the place where people are taught to question, where the whole point of you being there is to be questioning kind of everything you think. So what has that been like, and, mm. and what, what have you been doing there? Well, ours at AM, the organization I work for, you know, we've always been focused on wanting to reach the thinking skeptic. Ravi Zacharias, who founded the ministry over 30 years ago, that was always his, his vision. Don't go to the Christian places. Go to the kind of, you know, right into the heart of the secular world and the university is one of those places and it's interesting as you say Amy that you know the university should be a place where you have the freedom to think and explore often that's not the case there are often mm. you know very particular worldviews that are pushed on students and they're not given the space to look at alternatives so we love to take any opportunity to go onto university campus and when we do amazing things happen in fact, just two weeks ago we did uh, we were involved in two huge university missions one at the University of Toronto uh, back in Ontario, another back at uh, McGill University in, uh, in, uh, in Quebec. And we partnered with about seven or eight other ministries, campus ministries, churches. And across those two weeks, probably saw a couple of thousand students reached, a uh, huge number of university students coming to the uh, talks we were running, people giving their lives to Christ, um, lots of people now doing follow-up courses, and uh, Christian students mobilized and excited about evangelism on campus in a way that many people were saying they haven't seen for years. And that shows me evangelism is possible. You see, I think, a lot, I think a lot of us don't think it is. We don't say that, but a lot of us, we hide out in our Christian ghettos and we think, you know what, the university is unreachable, the world of business is unreachable, the world of politics, media, gosh, let's not even go there. And I think what we discover is actually you can go there. When you take the questions head on, when you listen to what people are asking, and you listen and you engage and you do so in a way that engages people's heads, hearts and imaginations, they come and they come in their hundreds. Mm -hmm. So we're really excited about what we're seeing on university campuses. And in fact, on, on Monday after Mission uh, Fest, I'm, I'm staying on for a, a day and we've got some stuff happening on the University of Manitoba campus. Oh. They've got me speaking twice uh, on do, uh, do Muslims and Christians worship the same God? 
nice non-controversial topic. Oh yeah. And then, can <laughs> life have any meaning without God? So we're doing one uh, one lecture uh, engaging our Muslim friends and one engaging our atheist friends, and wow. partnering with Power to Change and uh, and seeing what's going to happen there. Uh, well, uh, you have that information on your Facebook page, if people can't quite remember, right? That's so the best place to go. So if they go to our Facebook page, they can find us through our Arsley in Canada, uh, or they can search for me, Andy Bannister, on Facebook. And either way, you'll find uh, you'll find what we're doing. And uh, Or you can Google uh, Power to Change uh, University of Manitoba, because we're partnering with them for these events on Monday, and you can find all that stuff on their, on their website. And then what about your website, uh, if people want to find out more? Yeah, so where people can find more, they can go to rzim.ca, that's our Canadian website, and they can find what we're doing. Uh, I'm just one of a, 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 big, a quite big team here in Canada, so they can find the other stuff we're doing. And if people are into the whole social media stuff, or again, search for RZAM or RZAM Canada on Twitter and on Facebook. And if you go to youtube.com uh, forward slash RZAM Canada, you'll find lots of videos and stuff where myself and some of my colleagues engage some of these questions Great. we've been talking about. So loads of ways to go further, Amy. Okay, well, uh, also, you can just come on over and chat with him yourself at Mission Fest. He's going to be at the Young Adults event tonight at Emmanuel Pentecostal Church. And then he'll be at the main event at the Church of the Rock building Saturday and Sunday. All that info is at missionfestmanitoba.org. Thank you so much for being here today. It's been great. Thanks, Amy.